Hi right, fellas, welcome back. I've been asked a few times on videos about Paul's bikes, <laughs> so I thought I'd do a quick video and we'll have a quick look around at some of the bikes. You've got some, but we're not going to say Paul in storage, but yeah. this, these are most your nice, your nice <laughs> ones. Yeah, it sort of got a bit out of hand really, if Did I'm it? Yeah, because originally I've, it was this that started it off. I've always liked the OW01. Some people will know exactly what it is as soon as you say that, but a lot of people don't. They think it's just an FZR 750. But in the bike racing in the 90s, you had to build so many production bikes to homologate race bikes. Right, right. So each manufacturer had to build basically a road-going version of the exact bike they wanted to race. Like the Sierra Cosworth and it, stuff. Exactly, that was a homologation special. So basically they had to build the, the production bikes exactly the same as the race bikes so right. that, that, that they met the homologation so these are quite rare they're not just an fzr 750 they've got a lot of race stuff on them like they're all in suspension they've all got alley tanks not steel right obviously all single seater uh -huh. this has got uh, titanium con rods in it has it oh yeah they're, they're they're not just you know made to look like a race bike the, the idea of these was that privateer teams could go and buy one of these from the local yamaha dealer honda dealer kawasaki whatever they wanted they could basically take the lights out take the indicators off and go and race it. racing it, it was a, a production race bike if you will so i always wanted one of these i always wanted an ow01 and i nearly bought one probably i would say probably six seven years ago maybe even a bit longer and they were 10 grand. Six or seven years ago? Yeah, and I was like, I'm not paying 10 grand, you know. <laughs> I know where I'm paying 10 grand. And, you know, I sold one of my RS500 road cars probably 18 months ago. I didn't really want to sell it, but I never used it. Yeah. And, and I couldn't see it was stuck in one of containers. I, I never saw it. And I thought, Do you know what, I got made a good offer on it. So I sold it and I thought, right, I'm going to buy an OW01. And I started looking again, and there were 20 grand plus, and I'm like, <laughs> oh, I wish I'd bought one when there were 10. And then I was saying to myself, well, I'm not buying one at 20 grand plus. And then I thought, but then in another five years time, I'm going to be saying, I wish I'd bought one when there were 20 odd grand. So I started looking like you do, and I, I saw a lot of heaps of junk. You have to be careful, because a lot of these, as I say, were raced. So right. a lot of people took like the, the top half of the fairing off with the headlights in and put a race fiberglass one on. I went racing. And went racing and then when they'd finished racing and these weren't competitive anymore, they'd put all the original bits back on and sell them as a road going bike, as low mileage road going bikes. Because they hadn't done a lot of miles, you see, they'd only no. raced them. So you have to be really careful. So I looked at quite a few and you could clearly see they'd been bashed about and been down road, you know. Is this the pride of your collection, this one? It's not the most valuable, but it's the one I like the most. I always wanted the OW01 ah. and it's mint. And I bought it off it a collector from Derbyshire. I rang him up, I'd heard about it. I rang him up and he said, oh, it's, it, it, you won't find better. You know, it nice. It has been restored, uh -huh. you know, not because it was rough. It was just the wheels have been repainted. They've had the bodywork redone because these are all fiberglass kits these you see as standard yeah as standard they were all fiber for the weight you see to keep the right. weight down and all have these quick release fasteners so you can take the body work off real quick and, and the only thing it's had done it's had the frame polished which was a thing everybody did in the like 90s everybody and it shouldn't be like that it should be a, a matte finish like right. that so it sort of put me off a little bit but the rest of the bike was that mint it looks nice up there i might yeah it was a bit of a pain to get it up there like right. so i bought that which is what i always wanted and then i obviously did a bit of homework and and realized that every manufacturer had built an homologation special uh -huh. so i started looking and thinking oh well, what, what was there? suzuki's and whatever and that was suzuki's homologation special again all 750s because that's what they raced in gp racing back in the day so they're all 750s and I found that, which again, same thing, single seater look, aluminium tank, not metal, uh, internals, different engine, different suspension, things like that. These are obviously, they're all made in low numbers, uh -huh. very low production numbers. Now I've tried to find out exactly how many of each was and I can't work it, you out. Can't work it out. Everywhere I go, every time I click on a link or I Google it, 
Some say there was a thousand of these made, some people say there was two thousand and that so many were UK bikes and so many were Japanese bikes and so and I'm like well so I don't, don't know all I know is the low volume production bikes, they, they only built as many really as they had to do get away with to get them. away with the homologation. But I do know that I've seemed to have found on everybody says that these, there was only 500 made. Really? Yeah, of which only 50 were UK spec. Because obviously you've got Japanese spec, European spec bikes, they're all slightly different. Now the British bikes are worth a lot more because they were original British bikes. This is one of the original 50, which... So it is rather then? Yeah, I'm no expert and it doesn't, I sort of, it baffles me because they say, oh, it's a British one. Well, they were all made in Japan. They were all made in exactly the same factory. They're just tiny little differences. But this is definitely one of the original 50 UK, UK, bikes. UK bikes. And that's original, that's not been restored. So, but, so it's beautiful for its condition and it's done. I was going to say what miles on it? This has done 17,000 miles. That I think I can't see because it's up there, but if I remember correctly, it's done about seven, 8,000 miles. Right. So that's low mileage and that, but that's a, uh, that's not a UK bike. This is a Japanese import right. one, which you can Does you that affect the value? <sighs> you don't know. To some people, yes. To me, it doesn't. I buy them on condition and history. You know, if it's got um, paperwork and that, that's all I'm bothered about. Right. But the difference on the OW01 is the headlights at the front. You can tell on the import ones because the, the headlights stick flush look with the bodywork. Oh, all right. On the British one, the headlights are recessed further back in. Oh, all right, sit in like an inch or something. Yeah, which some people prefer. I couldn't care less, really. I, I just love the bike. It looks mint sat up there, mind. It really does. <laughs> and then we'll leave that one till last because right. there's a reason. So uh, the ZXR, Kawasaki's version of the homologation bike, again, Ali Tank, single seater, blah, blah, blah. And you know what? That, that bike's probably grown on me more than any of the others. Has it? Because I don't like Kawasaki Green. Do you not? Nope. Uh, well, I say I don't. I never did. Right. I never did like Kawasaki Green. And I put a post on good old Facebook looking for a ZXR. RR, they call oh, these wow. RR, which stands for race replica. So this is the GS, um, ZXR RR750. Anyway, I put a post up and somebody sent me a link to Facebook, to eBay, sorry, one on eBay. And I thought, well, I've been looking on eBay. The guy had listed it wrong. So it never showed up when you typed in ZXR RR. He just put ZXR. Well, of course, right. I was typing in ZXR RR. Oh, wow. Anyway, th this was in Derbyshire which is ironically where I bought the OW01 from. That was Derbyshire. Anyway, I clicked on the link, saw it on eBay. There was a phone number and I rang him up straight away and said, look, if it's as nice as you say it is, I'd like to buy it. You know, I'd like to arrange to come and look at it, blah, blah, blah. And he says, um, oh, he said, I've had a lot of interest. You know, I've had a lot of people ring me about it. I said, well, I'll come tonight. Really? I said, yeah, I'll come tonight with Van, and if it's as you say it is, I'll buy it. I won't haggle with price, I'll pay you exactly what you're asking for, if it's as nice as you say it is. He said, oh, it's mint. He said, I've restored it, completely stripped it, and rebuilt it from a bare frame. And he said, but to be honest, it didn't really need restoring. He said, it was pretty mint when I got it. He said, but I'm really fussy. Anyway, I jumped in van with Joanne and we drove down. It was one of them nights, you know, and it was absolutely hammering it down with rain. Uh -huh. Drove to Derbyshire, he opened his garage door, I looked at it, I just went, Jesus, that's mint. And what I hadn't noticed on the eBay ad, because I was that excited, you know, like you do, getting excited Hi. about buying it. There was a video, a YouTube video, of him doing the restoration, you know, in Speed It Up. Oh, time lapse. Time lapse video, Speed. And... You could see him strip it to a bare frame, but you could see the bike before he started. And, and like he said, you were like, what did you do that for? It looked pretty mint, it mint. but he was just really finicky. Anyway, as soon as I saw it, it uh, I was like, right, I'll have it. No, anyway, he, he fired it up. I gave him the money, put it in back at van. And do you know when certain things people say really make your mind up? I knew he was fussy because most people have wheels powder coated. Uh -huh. Well, when you have stuff wet painted or powder coated, even though it's the same RAL number, which is the colour, uh -huh. the powder coating is usually a very, very slight difference because of the way it's put, put uh, applied. Uh -huh. It makes the colour slightly different. Well, he had the wheels on this wet painted by the same company who did all the bodywork. 
because he didn't want a colour variant. Right. And I thought, well, that tells you how fussy it is. <laughs> and it matches perfectly. Was good. It does, I. It does. So I bought that one. And then the funny thing is, that the only one left was Honda. Well, Honda do the RC30, uh -huh. which is that bike there. And that's the one I like the least. Out of these? Out of all of them. I've never liked the single-sided swinging arm. Have you not? I don't like it. And most people, that's what pushes them to the RC30. Everybody wants an RC30. Anyway, I thought, well, I've got three. You've got to get the... I've got to get the fourth one <laughs> to get, get the, the set. Forward. Then I start looking at prices and I'm like, you're having a laugh. <laughs> because the RC30 is so popular. I mean, I don't mind saying that. I give 37,000 for that. Did you? 37 grand. How long ago was that? Only a year ago. Not even a year ago. 37 grand. Because it's 5,000 miles from new. It came with the ID card, which I'd never heard of, you know, because I, I like bikes, but I'm not into bikes like I'm into my cars. Mm -hmm. So I was learning all the time. And, and I saw this bike advertised. I'm like, I can't pay 37 grand for a bike I don't even really like. Anyway, I, I went on one of the Facebook pages and there's a guy on there who was like, like I am with RS 500s, he can tell you everything about them. Which north, south, west, the dust captured face is <laughs> proper. Anyway, I messaged him and said, "Look, I'm looking for an RC, um, an RC 30, but I want a nice example. You know, I don't want my other bikes are nice. I don't want a scruffy RC 30." And he went, "And mine failed." And I knew what other bikes had got. He said, this is the most difficult one to buy. Because he said, they are probably the one that was used the most as a race bike. Right. So he says, a lot of them are scruffy. Really, really scruffy. And he said, have you seen one? I said, yeah, I've seen one at Craig's Honda. I said, but it's well, it was 38 grand. And I said, 38 grand for an old bike? And he went, that isn't ridiculous. I said, it is to me. And he was like, for an RC30 with the ID card, the original toolkit, two keys, full service history book, a UK bike, again, which makes them more valuable, with only 5,000 mile on, he said, that isn't expensive. Well, it's expensive, but it's not as ridiculous. Fair price. As it, yeah, it's a fair price. And I was like, what's this ID card? He said, well, when you bought them new, they came with like a credit card. Right. And it had all the information of the bike on it, you know, the chassis number and everything. And it came in a nice little folder. He said, well, you know, they're the kind of thing that the owner brand new keeps and then they get lost or thrown away. He said, but this bike, he said, and funny enough, I have seen that bike. He said, I went to view it because to find one never been restored, never had any paintwork is so rare. I had to go and see it. He said, and to be honest, Paul, you will not find a better RC30. Now, when I went to, I ran Craig's under about it and I said, oh, you know, I told him who it was who I'd spoke to. And he said, oh, he's seen the bike. He said, well, we've got six. I said, you've got six RC30s. They're that rare, apparently. He said, well, we deal in a lot of rare bikes. He said, we've got six. He said, come and have a look at it. He said, look at the condition of the others. We've got the other five and you'll see why that's that money. Now, the others were nice, but nowhere near nowhere like near this. this. They were nowhere near. So I was like, I couldn't decide. And I'm like, I kept looking at it thinking, well, it is mint. But that's stupid money for a bike that I like the least. <laughs> anyway, I just thought, you know what? Uh, but the money in the bank, isn't it? Well, I mean, the funny See, thing is, I, I bought the bike, obviously. I knocked him down. I gave him 37. He wanted 38. So I bought it. This is funny because I said to him, he said on the advert, come fully serviced, MOT'd, blah, blah, blah. So I said to him, look, I want it serviced. I want it MOT'd. But then when you've done it, I want you to drain the fuel out of it and disconnect the battery. What for? I says, well, I'm never going to ride it. I said, I want it. It's an investment. You uh -huh. know, I said, I've sold the car. I want to put the money into something else because money's worth now in the bank. He said, well, you won't go wrong with with an R with, with any of the bikes you've bought. He said, but specifically an RC30 is the one everybody seems to want. So he says, well, why do you want it MOT and servicing? I said, well, look, if I come to sell it, if I change what I decide to do or whatever in 10 years time, I can say that before it went off the road, it was MOT and serviced. I can MOT it, service it to sell it and it, all its history carries on, if you know right. what I mean. Uh -huh. So he said, yeah, that makes sense then really. So. They did it serviced, yeah, MOT'd and delivered it for me here. 
And Amazing. Guy, when he came with Van, we took it out and we wheeled it in here and he just looked round and he went... <laughs> was uh, it a bike guy the port? Yeah, yeah, he was into bikes. So uh, that's quite a funny story with that one, really. And and he, and he has grown on me, you know, that when you, I sit down there and I have a cup of coffee and I look at him and, and it is a beautiful bike, but I just can't get my head around that single-sided swinging arm. So is there anything else you want to add to the collection? Well, yeah, I'd like one of everything, but you can't have it. I mean, there's an RC45, which uh -huh. was a later model. But to be honest, I'm running out of room. I'm running out of funds. <laughs> so f for now, I, I've, I've, what you got. Yeah, I've got one, one of each homologation special from each manufacturer. Yeah, I'm happy with what I've got. Uh -huh. I still like, as you know, you, you were with me at the NEC, weren't you, this year? And uh -huh. I, bought this, I bought this little thing at the auction, Silverstone Auctions, just because I thought it was quite cool. It's like really. the little old Honda, isn't it? There's a Honda with this kind of style. Yeah, it's, um, it's actually a Gorelli, which you don't hear a lot of, really, but it's 50cc. And I bought it just because I thought it was just quite cool. Uh -huh. And it was cheap, cool. really. It was not a lot of money. And I thought, do you know what? It's a nice, it's a nice thing to have. Um, I don't think I'd ever ride that. Like I'd look like an elephant on Matchbox <laughs> when I. But it's just a, a cool. No, it is cool. Yeah, it's nice, isn't it? Nice collection. And then I bought that one as well, which that came from the same auction as you know. That's um, this is what this was. I loved this one when we when we were down there. Was, yeah, it's quite trick that, isn't it? It, is, and, it looks and, like a proper little. I never looked at the paperwork until I got it home when I'd got it and then this actually won a championship did this bike. Did it really? Yeah. So it's cool, it's quite trick that isn't it? That's a sort of a modern modern looking bike. A modern that one trick bike as that's an old uh -huh. an old thing. But yeah, that's trick. I like it just cheap again, so I bought it. And then I, I bought this recently, Manx Norton, and and I bought this because I saw it advertised on Facebook. And this Obviously, Norton built these as, as a pure race bike. The Manx Nortons were the untouchable bike in period. Nothing could beat a Manx Norton, really. Oh, there was a matchless G50 and BSAs and that, but Manxes were the, the, the more sort of reputable race bike. And I, again, I bought this because of a story with it, really. It was built by a guy called Ray Petty. Well, Ray Petty used to race Manx Nortons in period, and he was like one of the best racers there was. But he was known for building bikes as well. You know, people would go to Ray Petty, and rather than buy a Manx from Norton, Ray could buy all the parts off Norton with being a works rider, and he built his built own. So he built his own bike. So that's an original Ray Petty bike. But what attracted me to it, We've all heard of Mini Champs that do the models. Uh -huh. Mini Champs made a 118 scale version of the Manx Norton. Uh -huh. It was on based on that. Yeah, this exact bike. There it is. So that that there, that model that is model, this exact. It, it, it was used oh, this right. this bike. I mean, I've got the box there, and when you look at the pictures inside, it shows you parts of the bike, and you can clearly see without any doubt it's this bike that it's that bike that Mini Champs use. So. To me, what's this? Uh, is that oil in there? That's the oil tank, yeah. Yeah, which right between your air three pits. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I'd, I've always had a thing for these Manx Nortons. When I me, the bike thing comes from my dad, really. My dad was a real, real big bike man. I'm was into cars, yeah, massive into bikes. And as I was growing up, he would always show me pictures of Manx Nortons, and I say, "Oh, this is this is what you know what you want, lad. A Manx Norton. They're the things to have." So. I've had a few of these over the years. These and are big money as well now, aren't they? Yeah, you can... It, the, the motorbike's exactly the same as cars. When it comes to race stuff, it's um, who rode it, who built it, and if you can prove it won anything, the value goes massive. Mm -hmm. The biggest problem with these is, obviously, they were raced in the 50s and 60s. They never kept records, really, then. Mm -hmm. So everybody who's got a Manx Norton will tell you Mary Whitehouse won the TT on in 90, and they've got no proof uh -huh. of anything. So it's very, very difficult to prove anything. But we know that's a rare petty bike. It's got um, a fancy front hub on it that apparently there was only seven ever made. And the guy who I bought the bike off said that front hub is worth quite a few thousand pounds on its own. Really? But I would never sell it. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, it belongs to the part of the bike. And What's the signature on the front? Uh, Phil Reid, a famous rider. TT rider? Yeah, famous rider. But I have another one of these that I've had for a lot of years. Can we see it? 
Because it's in somewhere pretty special, isn't it? Yeah, you can have a look at that. I've had that one for years and I'll never sell... What about this camera? I'll never sell that one. So, we're in your kitchen now, Paul? <laughs> we are, yeah. That where most people keep the motorbikes. <laughs> to be honest, I, I've mentioned it here, if we can get a motorbike in our kitchen, but I'm not allowed, so... You've had the kitchen built around the bike, haven't you? Around yeah, this we have, yeah. Luckily, um, one of my best mates manufactures kitchens for a living. And I told him we wanted to put the you know the bike in in the kitchen and we wanted a way on where it was sort of safe it was on view but not sort of in the way if you know what i mean mm -hmm. so we talked about the center island piece and then he says well why don't you mount it in there and and he manufactured it raised up so that it would slide under so you sort of don't knock it or anything ah, but yeah you can nice. still see it all right but that's, um, I've had that a lot of years, that bike, and that's a very, very special bike. I was going to say, this is a special one, this one, isn't it? It is, yeah. That bike was originally owned and ridden by a guy called Derek Minter. Right. Well, Derek, anybody that knows race bikes and the old TT, was one of the biggest riders in the world at the time. Um, and he rode for Norton as a works rider, and this was one of his bikes. And the good thing about this bike is it's what we call a match in numbers. So right. it's got the original frame number and the original engine number that both match. Well, on these old bikes, it's incredibly rare because when the engines used to let go, they used to break the crankcase. When the engine let go, it would crack the oh, crankcase right. and the engine numbers stamped into the crankcase. So obviously, back in the day, nobody cared. You would just get a set of new crankcases and put it back together and race it. Uh -huh. Well, this bike's still on its original crankcase. um, crankcases and its original frame. The gearbox is the original one. Oh, it's got the numbers stamped yeah, on it. Yeah, it's got the numbers on it. So that's a gearbox there, isn't it? Yeah. 39, was that the age when you bought it, were you seeing? Yeah. <laughs> I, I put that number on because I thought, well, do you know when people say to you, how long have you had that? And you go, <laughs> oh, it must be five or six years. So how long have you had it? Well, I'm 50 now. 50, 11 yeah, years? 11 years. Fast maths out, wasn't it? That's it fellas, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that, looking around Paul's bikes. Quite a collection, thanks for having us down mate. You're welcome, something a bit different in it from it is, cars. It is, If you want to see more videos with Paul, if you go through my YouTube videos, there's loads there, with mainly Cosworths. But who doesn't like to see Cosy at the, the end of the day? <laughs> but yeah, again fellas, thanks for watching, and thanks for Paul for having us down. You're welcome, thanks. Spot on. See you on the next one fellas.